Today brings us to part two of our series on the Philippines. We'll meet a young man who's engaged in a battle against a tenacious enemy, poverty. The Philippines' economy is booming. It has one of the fastest-growing GDPs in Asia, averaging about 5% over the past five years. But almost 20% of the population lives below the international poverty line defined in U.S. money terms as $1.25 per day. More than 40% of the population makes less than $2 a day. Those kinds of statistics can be daunting. But one person who grew up in the slums isn't intimidated. He's determined to change that, starting early. High-rise buildings in Manila speak of the prosperity of the Philippines. Scenes from other neighborhoods around the city tell a different story. The disparity between rich and poor has become wider. Many children go without education because their families are unable to afford textbooks and uniforms. As a result, large numbers of kids end up collecting and selling garbage to eke out a living. More than a few turn to begging. The city of Cavite sits on the outskirts of Manila. A teenage boy from here has been giving hope to children who live in slums scattered across the metropolitan area. Chris Kes Valdez won the International Children's Peace Prize in 2012. The award recognizes work done in support of children's rights. In his case, it was for projects that help poor children. Kes grew up in these slums and started collecting garbage at the age of two. He's now 15. That's also uh... Uh, collecting garbages in the dump site where I used to live and I also uh, beg for money in the market and that was, uh, that was the things that I do to, uh, to earn money to give it to my, f uh, to my father. I need to give it up because when I didn't, he, uh, he will beat me up and uh, like that. Kez lived in fear of abuse from his father, a drug addict and alcoholic. He used to sleep in a cemetery for safety. One day, while collecting garbage in a dump, he fell on a pile of burning tires and suffered serious burns. Kez reached out to Harnan Manalaisai for help. Manalaisai was a volunteer who had expressed concern about him. <laughs> he really is, uh, uh, you know, being a... Uh, being seen very small, he's, he's being, uh, he's mistreated and uh, he needs to grow up uh, in a surrounding that, uh, that is filled with love. Help by itself would have been welcome, but Harnan did more than just that. He adopted Kez. I believe that God uh, sent them to help me in, in my situation because I was, uh, I was abandoned by my parents and they are the one who, uh, who feel that uh, I need to be loved and cared. So. For the first time in his life, Kez experienced the joy of receiving a gift. When he was asked what he wanted for his seventh birthday, he answered, sandals and toys to give other children. Not so long after, he put this idea into practice. Uh, some of his friends... At the age of eight, he began distributing toothbrushes and sandals, calling them hope gifts. So far, the movement, called Championing Community Children, has distributed gifts to more than 10,000 children. I want to give them uh, hope and uh, courage like that and to, be, and to make them happy uh, by the simple gifts that we, uh, we gave and the, like the toothbrushes that they can use. Kez holds open-air classes yeah. each week for the underprivileged. Yeah. <clears throat> the site is on the outskirts of Manila. Kids learn about hygiene and nutrition, and children's rights. The teachers are all children who grew up in similar circumstances. On the day we visited, 100 participants were present. Yeah. 
Ronaldo. The lessons are simple but effective, such as how to wash hands to prevent infection and disease. Kez and his fellow volunteers want to provide children who don't have access to education with information that will protect them and keep them alive. If they learn something that helps them escape from poverty, all the better. They teach us things that no one else does. When I grow up, I want to teach the children who live here too. Why did you decide that you wanted to do this kind of activity? Uh, we knew that there's a lot of uh, children uh, dying every, every year. Uh, there's uh, there's 6,000 children dying every year. And I know it is, uh, I, I know it is one of the, the things that I can do to help them. In addition to offering instruction in the slums, Kez continues his own studies. This class is supported by churches and other organizations. It's for children who, for whatever reason, often poverty or abuse, cannot attend a regular school. After all, Kez is also still growing up. He's looking toward the day he will earn a high school diploma. He hopes that achieving his own goals will convince children born into suffering and adversity that there's a way out. I want to be a doctor. Or, uh, yes, I want to be a doctor because I want to help more, uh, more children in the poor communities. There's a lot of children uh, living in the streets, begging for money, and, and I want to change that by being an example by uh, by dreaming, by dreaming, uh, because dreaming is uh, is free. Because when you dream, you can achieve it, and by achieving it, you can uh, you can help the community. You know, Kes's movement now has partners beyond Manila as well, where children support other children. Kids are finding ways to help themselves where adults have failed them. But the older generation shouldn't let that excuse them from finding a comprehensive long-term solution.